Hello and welcome to The Geeks Review. I'm Royce. I'm Jacob. On today's show, we're going to be talking about two movies I've long wanted to talk about, Kajillionaire and Nobody. And I'll be talking about the Beyond the Pale podcast. But first up, this. Now, Kajillionaire is directed by Miranda July, stars Evan Rachel Wood, Gina Rodriguez and Richard Jenkins. This is a curious kind of crime drama, romantic comedy drama with LGBTQ themes, very appropriate for Pride Month at the moment. Uh, Evan Rachel Wood of TV shows like Westworld and True Blood stars as this young woman called Old Dolio. She's the daughter of two con people. They basically just scrape by existing within the Los Angeles County, roaming around pulling cons and fast ones on people. Um, Her character, she's this sort of androgynous, very strange woman. She's sort of out of touch with reality and society, her parents as well. It's sort of a very strange film going into where you don't quite know if this is going to be a really quirky, like, you know, offbeat comedy. Is it going to be like a horrific drama? It's sort of got elements of of each. And her character, she's like, she craves affection, but she recoils at, at other people's touch, at other sort of displays of affection. And sort of, she's anxious and she's sort of touch starved, depressed. And like, um, they try to pull a con on like this massage parlor. And as she goes in for a massage, it's like she just tenses up and like the, the, the masseuse is just like, I don't know what to do with you if you're just going to be like this. Uh, but like I said, they roam around pulling cons and she comes up with this idea, does Dolio, to uh, pull a bit of insurance fraud. So they're going to fly from LA to New York, pretend to misplace their baggage and then claim the insurance off of that. While on the flight back, her parents are seated next to this young woman, this young woman played by Gina Torres, and this is uh, Jane the Virgin from that TV show. Uh, she was also in the film Annihilation with Natalie Portman and Oscar Isaac. I believe she got killed by a bear in that. <laughs> Sounds about right. If you've not seen that film, um, but she becomes very close to Dolio's parents, and Dolio starts to feel a bit, you know, displaced and sort of wondering what's this, what's this woman up to? And you sort of think the film's going to go one direction, but it goes another as. Gina Torres' character actually connects with with Dolio and sort of a romance begins between the two of them. Like I said, this is tonally very strange and all over the place. You kind of think it's going to be very (laughs) Tim Burton-esque in places and then very dark and depressing and deals with sort of themes of trauma as Dolio kind of confronts, you know, the horror that her parents have put her through and just feeling unloved and... Her parents, meanwhile, try to bed Gina Torres' character. Oh. It's very unusual, this film. Yeah, I can tell. (laughs) But I think, in the end, uplifting. There's sort of weird, strange moments where they have to... Stuff just happens in this film, and I'm sort of at a loss of trying to... Stuff happens in most films. (laughs) Yeah, I know that. (laughs) I know, state the obvious. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, this is Kajillionaire. It's available to watch now on Foxtel. Available free to watch and probably on Binge and all the other services. Yeah, if you like Evan Rachel Wood, if you like Richard Jenkins, who's been in a great number of things, like Olive Kitteridge with Francis McDormand and uh, Burn After Reading, also with Francis McDormand, I believe. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Very strange movie. And in the end, uplifting and positive and heartbreaking and happy and hilarious and all these other things. Sort of a hard film to describe after only seeing it once. Yeah, I can, I can see that. Mm. It certainly does sound intriguing. Yeah. Behind the scenes, I struggled to get this review out. <laughs> 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 I had to do a, two, a few takes. That's fine. That's all part of the process. But anyway, moving on, what have you got for us? Uh, I'm sharing my thoughts on the Beyond the Power F- podcast, hosted and produced by Larry Fessenden and Glenn McQuaid. Oh, yeah? Don't know much about Glenn McQuaid personally, other than that he is involved in movies and the such, but Larry Fessenden is actually quite a prolific actor in B-grade horror movies, oh, as yeah. well as featuring as the stranger in the game Until Dawn, one of my favourite games. Oh yes, I know of this game. He is fantastic, has a great voice, and he hosts his podcast called Beyond the Power of the Podcast, as though he's a 30s radio presenter. So very much think... Towers from the Crypt or the Twilight Zone-esque kind of narration. Oh, yeah. With this kind of very relaxed, laid-back, slightly southern drawl. Now, the, the uh, episodes were all written 
directed and produced by different people. A lot of them involved in movies, some Hollywood, some not. Vincent D'Onofrio showed up a couple of times, which was interesting. They oh, yeah. vary in quality. A few of them have <clears throat> put his problematic language. Yeah. A lot of them are products of the directors and writers and what they're trying to emulate. So mm. if you can get past that, you're good, but be warned. But most of them, well-performed, mm. well-written, very interesting, because they're basically strange or horror stories fitted into 30 minutes. Right, okay. And some have been fantastic. One of my favorites called Food Chain, and I'll spoil the plot to this one, so yep. skip like <laughs> two minutes, stars for the first time since Lord of the Rings, Billy Boyd and Donald Monaghan teaming oh, up again. Wow. Vo- voicing basically a Steve Irwin type <laughs> and his cameraman. Oh, and no. <laughs> Billy Boyd is the cameraman, and Donnie Monaghan gets hit into a lizard man. Oh. <laughs> and it's brilliant. It is so nice to see these two put them together again. They have such a fun dynamic, and mm. it's just a fun little story. But I, if anyone's into like horror, strange podcasts, if you like, like The Wrong Station, which is another brilliant horror, strange story podcast I love listening to, mm. much about that another time, I would definitely say give Beyond the Pale the podcast. Listen, it's on Spotify. And I presume most other stream uh, podcast streaming services. So, give it a look. It's really good, and Larry Fessenden is a fantastic host. I really like the the concept of um, anthology series like oh, this. I love anthology series because I mean, you, week to week, you've got like a totally different series, like a totally different story. And, and I always leave you wanting more, but you never get it. <laughs> to have those two, though, I mean, I mean, they're not the, the biggest stars. I mean, it's been twenty years already since Lord. You also had Vincent D'Onofrio on there, so he's great. Who else have they had on this series? I can't think of any other. I know there's been quite a few people who've been involved in a lot of movies. Mm -hmm. Maybe some actors that aren't quite as much on the big A-listers, but let's face it, that's not saying much because A-list celebrities, a lot of them (laughs) just kind of phoning it in these days. Oh, pretty much. But a lot of people who are very talented, very hardworking, very skilled actors and workers. The voice work isn't always fantastic. A lot of these are screen actors doing voice acting, Mm. but the heart's there. Yeah, they're putting in the effort. They're trying to make a great story. One of the stories, Cannibals, which stars written and written by Vincent D'Onofrio, brilliant from start to end. Yeah, it's just fantastic. Tens just these two people. It's just two people talking, and the tension and the build up and the twists and the suspense, and it's all put into thirty minutes. is just brilliant. Yeah. So I'd highly recommend if you like that stuff, give it a listen. It is well worth it. Oh, definitely. Will do. Each episode also does have music written by composers. So oh, yeah. it has its own music playing and its own all that during the track. And it's like composers involved with, who have done movie tracks and all that. So that's really cool. Wow, that's cool. It's just really well put together and fun. And Larry Fessenden's posting at the start of the end of each episode is always a treat. Mm. The man is just fun to listen to. <laughs> and you can tell he loves what he does, which always helps. I want to sort of wrap up the episode today, a bit of a shorter one today, discussing the film Nobody, which is available to watch on various streaming services. It was in the cinemas a few months ago, but only just got around to it now. It's written by the same man behind the John Wick films, directed by the director of Hardcore Henry, which was a first-person view action movie. Stars Bob Odenkirk from Mr. Show, Breaking Bad, and Better Call Saul, along with Connie Nielsen and a bunch of other actors you might recognise from other things. Um, Christopher Lloyd is actually in this, as well as Michael Ironside. (laughs) Hey, now we're talking. Yeah. So... The, the way it sets it up is that it's very much John Wick inspired, John Wick sort of adjacent, where Bob Odenkirk's character is this guy who obviously has a past, some sort of experiences with uh, with the criminal underworld, it would seem. And after the house is burgled and it seems as though his daughter's kitty cat bracelet has been stolen, he then goes to seek violent retribution. However, he doesn't find that, um, and while on the bus ride home, the bus is taken over by a bunch of violent thugs, so he uses his skills long dormant and deals with them, except one of the guys that he's beaten up ends up being the younger brother of a big crime boss. Naturally. Thus begins all-out war. Oh, goody. Yeah. So uh, the John Wick films, you know, really sort of revitalised Keanu Reeves' career. Back in 2014, when the first one came out, and we've had three since. This is good. I do love Keanu, so... Possibly going to be a future for those. This is very much in the vein of those films, and uh, this is going to sound like a strange comparison here, but to me, it's sort of like nobody is like the Logan Lucky to John Wick's Ocean's Eleven, which, I mean, you have a bit of experience with the Ocean's Eleven movies. Oh, I love the movies. I've seen them all except the most recent one. Mm. 
Because I'm just abhorrently sexist. <laughs> um, no, I haven't got around to it yet. <laughs> um, yeah, so with with the Ocean's Eleven movies, I guess I maybe I saw them too late because I mean when I did get to see them, they were already like twenty years old. But for me, they sort of felt a bit too slick, a bit a bit like you know they're going to go rob a casino, but then it's just like they've got all this all this tech, all this gear. We're just going to go rob an EMP device, you know, from the military, and they just walk in to the facility, literally, and steal it. I get where you're coming from with that. For me, that was always kind of the appeal of it. It was mm. just these people who were too good at their jobs just doing it flawlessly. Yeah. Oh, it isn't particularly riveting. It is enjoyable to watch them just completely trounce these rich assholes. I do like it. I do like the first one. It's pure catharsis. That's all they are. Yeah. But that's sort of what John Wick is. I mean, Keanu Reeves was like a former hitman. And it's like, you know, it's, it's all very slick. It's all very clean and crisp and, you know. Bang, bang, boom, boom, dead people. He's the top of his game. Like, he's never, even if he's like, you think he's going to be yeah. beaten, he just overcomes it. And It's you know. all just power fantasy and wish fulfillment, which mm. there is always a market for that. People always just want to go and think, I want to see the main character just win. Mm. just obliterate the bad guys and whatever whether it's stealing their shit or wiping them out I just want to see that happen and I get that it's nice to just go into me and think the good guys are going to win the bad guys are going to lose yeah that is good good. or if you watch the Ocean's movies I want to go and watch two hours of Brad Pitt just eating the (laughs) heck out of some food (laughs) just noshing on some food the man just loves to eat in movies he does yeah Um, but Logan Lucky came out a few years ago stars Adam Driver Channing Tatum and Daniel Craig same director as the Oceans movies, but it's it's a heist film in a different context where it's like these are just normal people who decide to rob a NASCAR game. <laughs> and it's a very similar NASCAR. deal, but it sort of feels like there's more stakes because they're just sort of, they're more real people. They're sort of like... They're a bunch of hicks. Yeah. It's more sort of lower, you know, lower, you know, score. They're not, you know, robbing from a potentially mafia, you know, sort of adjacent casino. Yeah. They're robbing from NASCAR and it's sort of, yeah. It's a lot more humble and sort of down to earth, and that's sort of what nobody feels like in a way. It's like, even though Bob Odenkirk is playing like this, you know, super assassin, it would seem. I mean, I won't exactly say what his what his deal is, but it's interesting to see him sort of fail at first, and it takes a while for him to get back into the swing of things. You know, whereas with John Wick, it's just immediate, like boof, yeah. boof, boof, boof. But this is a great scene, that bus fight, where he's he's on the bus and, you know, drunken yobbos crash their car and they get on the bus and he tells the driver to get off and he's, like, trying to justify him to himself, like, why he's going to beat these people up. And he's like, oh, there's this woman on the bus, you know, she's going to get home safely tonight. And then he just goes to town on these guys within the bus, like, using the, the, the cord to strangle a guy and, you know, like, the knife comes into it and he, like, kicks the knife into some guy's leg, I'm pretty sure and gets thrown through a window and gets back in the bus and beats him up more. And the action's just great in this and really heavy hitting, really well shot, really well just put together and done. And that's that was the comparison I had <laughs> to the Oceans movies because it's sort of like you've gone and got something which is so slick, which is so... You're watching gods, essentially, yeah. you know, rob a casino or shoot a bunch of people in the head. <laughs> and in this, you've gone and got a guy who's a bit more down to earth and he just... They just transform into ultimate robbers or the ultimate assassin. And that was really cool. It basically comes down to you just want pure catharsis and wish fulfillment or you want to have an actual arc mm. where they become good. Yeah. And that's fair enough. Both have their place in movies, both have their purpose, and both have a market. Mm. It just comes down to what you prefer. Yeah, for sure. I should actually go back and watch the Oceans movies. They're a fun watch. They're not particularly intelligent movies, but, <laughs> but they are enjoyable. Yeah. They they're good. Yeah, it's mostly yeah. dialogue for those ones. As as well as, as sort of stood out to me with a comparison between the two is that like, like I said, I mean they just go and get an EMP device in Ocean's Eleven. What you can't? No, get good not spell. now. I've tried, but they just say go away, you fool. You're not supposed to ask. Oh, I guess I should just walk in. Yeah, that's fine. What could happen? What's the worst that could happen? I get shot. What's the second worst thing that could happen? They get stabbed. <laughs> you have right. to be shot or stabbed, actually. Uh. Depends where. Hand. With what, uh, how powerful is the gun? Handgun. You know, just a 9 How millimeter. far away? Um, Point blank or a bit away? A few metres. A stab, you got to get it up close anyway, you know. Mm, it's a tough call. Stab, stabbed, I guess, is a smaller wound. Or you can heal just, 
Yeah. But it depends how high cover the bullet is. The low cover bullet just leave a hole and they'll heal eventually as well. But how yeah. big is the knife? Are we talking a Bowie knife or what? Uh, crocodile Dundee. Oh, jeez, I'll take the shotgun. I'll take the gun. <laughs> <laughs> what have I had left after that? <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Um, what were we talking about? Sorry. MP. Yeah. <laughs> With the, the, the John Wick movies, he just goes to Darth Maul. I mean, Peter, Peter Serafin, of which is in the, in the second John Wick movie. He just goes and he just gets a bunch of guns and then goes and does his hit, you know. Speaking of which, um, they're going to be doing a Hitman movie. Hitman series, I should say, from what the writer of John Wick. better than they did in the movies, which is to say not at all. Yeah, those movies were... Uh, not great. No. Not great. No. Timothy Oliphant, he just looks so strange. He's a good actor, but he is not a good Hitman. He even said himself he just never saw the movie, but he saw the house that bought him. <laughs> and then Rupert Friend in the sequel to that the, the Hitman movie which is weird because he kind of has the face for Agent 47 who's like this genetically engineered yeah. super assassin but then when they shaved his head he's just got like a, a bumpy pointy head yeah you gotta make sure a dude looks intimidating bald yeah just give him a bald cap actually yeah nice smooth cranium well, Idris Elba has got a good bald head <laughs> that would be interesting actually imagine if they did that <laughs> the writing I mean, you know, people would be like, oh, there's a black man playing Hitman. I was like, oh, yeah, Hitman's... <laughs> Finally, be Agent 48. Um, Agent 69. <laughs> hey. hey. <laughs> so that's terrible. In actually, uh, in the Tim Philoff movie, you've kind of got a bunch of other agents who try to kill him, and they're all bald men, and one of them's actually black, so... There you yeah. go, see, they've got black agents. Just do that. doesn't have to be Agent 47. What's... If you want Agent 47 story, go play the games. They're fantastic. Yeah, play the games. Don't, you know... Forget the, the films. You know. Yeah, the, the films aren't worth it. Yeah. But they're really not. They're not Hitman movies. They're just called Hitman. Yeah. Games, much better. Much more fun. Much more potential for camp. Oh, for sure. What I love about the, the Hitman games, actually, is that this, the story is, like, super serious. It's like, you know, the constant and, you know, the agency and all this stuff. And, and then you just get in the gameplay and you're just beating people to death with a fish while dressed as a flamingo. All the while, he still has the same trademark scowl he always has, and it's hilarious. <laughs> or you're invading some kid's birthday to kill his dad, and you're dressed as a giant chicken. Yeah. But still, with the same scowl on your face. It's just <laughs> fantastic. If anyone's into Hitman, go watch Harry Partridge's Hitman video. It's hilarious. Oh, it's, it's spot on, hey? It is just peak, just Hitman, and it's great. Yeah, man. Uh, but anyway, that was a review of Nobody. Let's um, see this episode out with a track from the film Nobody. This has been the Geeks Review. I'm Royce. I'm Jacob. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. See ya.